before we begin, uh, let me introduce our speaker for today. His name is Alex Seal. So Alex uh, was the first chairman of the Malaysia chapter of uh, CMT Association. He has uh, extensive experience in the fund management. So formerly, he served as a fund manager in uh, VCB Capital, a boutique asset management company for more than five years. And currently, Alex is the fund director of uh, SC Licensed Robo uh, Advisory Firm, which is the BH, a global fintech solution, Sajiran Bahat. Alex is specializing in uh, trading system and strategies, value investing, trading psychology, as well as uh, designing developing and a programming of a machine learning algorithm for a robo advisory. So that uh, would be the main topic that uh, you will be exposing as well as learning today. So without further ado, let me uh, pass this to Alex and uh, let's get started. Hi, thank you so. Hi everyone. Hello, good evening. Uh, let me just pass the mic to myself. Okay. Okay, right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Yeah, my name is Alex. Uh, uh, let me just have some interaction. Uh, how many of you have never seen me before? At the chat box there, just put a one. Those of you who have seen me before, put a two. Oh, some people say can't hear. Is it? Is it? You are able to hear, right? Uh, yes, we are able to hear. Okay, okay, okay. Can't hear anything. Some people say can't hear anything. All right. Yes, hear well. Well, okay, a lot of people didn't know me. Okay, uh, 250 over participants, but I do know some of you. <laughs> a lot of experts here, a lot of uh, specialists here in FCP or FKLI. So I already uh, asked some of my friends who are, I know they are attending, uh, please don't bombard me with very, very difficult questions. There are a lot of people here, they are more skillful than me. So uh, what the intention of uh, what I'm doing tonight, okay, is to... In this time of pandemic, I would like to encourage everyone, okay, uh, stay uh, focused, stay motivated. I know a lot of uh, people are very demotivated or bored. So stay interesting, you know, like uh, FCPO and FKLI are two products that can be very interesting and can be very, very, very innovative if you look at it from this perspective. So the purpose of why I'm sharing tonight is to encourage everyone is to relook at our Malaysian Busa futures in a more a very interesting way and in a different angle so that you all will enjoy okay uh, trading these products okay right that's the purpose of of course I, I will not be talking too much into strategy rather i'll talk more of my own experience okay in uh, uh the technology that i and my my colleagues develop okay on this type of products and also uh, i will not be selling anything i will not be uh, so, uh talking about selling you any software any software that i mentioned is all for my own experience and also for education and uh, knowledge for person. Okay, so I'll just do my disclaimer here. So without further ado, let me just share my slides. Okay. Okay. Right. I hope all of you can see my slide. Yeah. Okay. Right. So. Okay. Uh, tonight's topic. Well, it's a very big topic. It's a it's a stressful topic. Automation of uh futures product using AI. Okay. AI is a very big word. Okay. Let me just uh break it down to a smaller component of it, okay? Right, so there's some uh, disclaimer here, right? Uh, all these things are for education purposes only. I will not be selling you anything, okay? Right, it's a disclaimer. Uh, you have very introduced about me. Okay, uh, first thing, uh, there are a few parts, okay, of my sharing, okay? The first part is the infrastructure, okay? Like, uh, what are the current platforms? Uh, how how interesting can we adjust it a bit, okay, to make things a little bit more interesting? And then I'll be talking a bit about uh, the strategy part, okay, and uh, later on on the machine learning and AI component, okay, right. So let me just start with uh, part one, okay, automation for uh, local BUSA directives, okay. So this is not AI. This is how to automate. Okay, uh, there are so much, so little information out there, I must say, when I first embarked onto this journey of wanting to automate uh, FCPO and FKLI. Of course, uh, I'm not pro I will not be promoting any broker. I'm not broker specific. I'm not company specific. 
So for example, some of the information could be old information, okay, because, but, but they used to be the way it works that time, okay. Like for example, uh, a few years ago, yeah, when I want to automate, uh, there has to, I have to go through certain uh, API vendors, okay, if I want to automate in a certain broker, okay. Right, I'll try my best not to mention broker's name just to be partial, all right, all right just stay impartial. Right, and then uh, I also have to go through certain uh, IT providers, but things have changed. Now we can become, have more and more choices, okay, more and more choices, all right. So for example, uh, this is just an example, okay, it doesn't have to be the only way. And when I mention certain API vendor, they are not the only vendor and if there can be other alternatives as well, okay. Like for example, many years ago, okay, when I want to automate, let's say, FCPO trading, Okay, in a certain bro uh, broker, I have to go through their API vendor. So last time, one API vendor was called Pet System. Okay, so I have to go through. I have to connect my my algorithm to their through their system so that they can help me to connect to the broker so that I can automate my FCPO trading. Okay, right. And then if I do not know how to do it myself, if I don't have the algorithm, there are certain IT providers who can help me to code my strategy into an algorithm. One of those company last time uh, is called Algomac, yeah, one of the uh, company that I used to uh, ask some help from, okay? So that was the, the, the previous structure, okay? And of course, I will also need to ask for data from the broker before my algorithm can make some prediction, right? So this data has to go through the API vendor as well, okay? So this structure used to be the way things works, okay? And uh, now, of course, there are some improvements to it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I would just want to go through very briefly what actually the limitations of the local platform. Okay. This is non-broker specific. I think most of the brokers platform are in this way. Okay. And my main emphasis is that the brokers platform, I mean, most of the brokers that we know, the local brokers is limited to uh, a fixed set of technical indicators, I say, okay, as you can see here, all right. All these indicators are very, very familiar to everyone, right? Like um, moving average, Bollinger Bands, yeah, uh, MACD, stochastics, all these things, right? So I actually, as a person who is very curious about technical tools, yeah, since uh, 2000, year 2000 until now, I have always been asking myself, like, uh, why is like Uncle Bollinger, uh, 1970, uh, Stochastics, 1960 something, and, uh, you know, Gerard Apple, uh, MACD, 1965, and Moving Average, 1950. And why are all these indicators at the every broker's platform? And it's not just Malaysian brokers, it's also US brokers and Singapore brokers. And why, why are all these indicators like, like before 1990s? So what happened to 1990 to now? Are there no one that invented any indicators at all? So we will always have to use these old indicators forever. Like if I want to trade FCPO or FKI, must I be using Bollinger Band forever? I don't have any other choices. So even though I can make money, I might feel a little bit bored by using all these old indicators and there's no innovation. So um, local platforms do not allow for programming of new indicators, okay? I think that is the fact. And if you want to, let's say, oh, I have an idea, I want to program into, let's say, a certain broker, okay? Like for example, a Rakuten or, I don't know, uh, MBank or Maybank or, or Affin. Uh, I think there's a limitation to how much I can program a customized indicator into a local platform. I think that's the key point. Yeah. So uh, even the youngsters, okay? I used to lecture part-time, yeah, in universities and colleges. I can see youngsters, they are limited to all sets of tools. So I was thinking, is there any way that other than Bollinger Band, okay, can I actually invent, you know, something new, something interesting? So it's not just for the profit, but can we make trading more interesting? That was the quest uh, I had since 2000 plus, and then it became the quest of my life, like my whole life has always just been inventing and creating new indicators. I think that is what makes trading fun is that we become innovative, we think innovatively, and we just want to enjoy the process. It's not just making the money, but also creating the tools that can make trading really, really fun. 
Okay, so I want to talk about uh, Busan Station as a source of reliable data that where, where we can extract data from. Okay, these are paid uh, sources. Okay, there are also free sources, of course, like Yahoo Finance or Google Finance. So the data is important. Okay, it's important. And why do we need to extract data from Busan Station and put into Excel? And why do we need to do that? Can't we just trade directly from the local broker platform? The reason why I want to do that is because uh, during the, um, let's say mid 2000, let's say 2005, 2006, I realized that uh, we can actually create our own indicators uh, in free. We don't really have to pay for the platform to create indicators, okay? So one of the platform that I want to introduce to everyone, okay, is this platform called um, MetaTrader, okay? MetaTrader. A lot of people associate MetaTrader with uh, Forex and scam, but that's not what MetaTrader is. It's just that those Forex brokers, they use MetaTrader as well to serve their customers, okay? But MetaTrader is just a platform that end user can use for free to develop new indicators in, okay? And we can even put our FCPO price or FKLI price into MetaTrader so that we can develop indicators in it, okay? So I'm just, I'm not going to show you step by step, but rather today is just concepts and ideas for you, okay? So if you don't get the steps uh, very clear, don't worry, okay? I'm sure I think Busa will have certain uh, certain other classes where they will have to be more technical. But today, I try not to be too technical, okay? I try not to be too technical because not all of you are from technical background, but rather give you interesting ideas, all right? So as you can see that uh, after just a few steps extracting from Busa Station, I can actually put FCPO data into MetaTrader, okay? And then you can see that once you put uh, FKLI or FCPO data into MetaTrader, then you can actually analyze FCPO and FKLI inside MT4 or MT5. Okay, you can do that, right? And then you can actually develop indicators in it. That is actually one way, is the uh, cost-effective way of developing uh, interesting indicators uh, for retail users. Because I understand retail traders don't have much budget, unlike hedge funds, they have a big R&D budget, okay? So MT4 is a platform that can support development of indicators as well as development of technical systems, okay, you can see I'm very specific here. I didn't say AI system, I said technical systems to automate Busa futures trading, okay? FKLI, FCPO, you can actually uh, automate it in uh, through MT4 and MT5 platform, okay? Provided that you can get the data from somewhere. Let's say you buy the data from Busa, load it into MT4 or MT5, and then you use your own indicators to create signals, and then from there, send the signal back to uh through your broker to execute your trades okay uh through your brokers okay that is possible actually so mt4 and mt5 is actually could be a place where you develop your interesting indicators okay so that's the what i'm trying to tell you okay and how do you do that how do you do that because you can see that in mt4 okay this mt4 yeah is the same as mt5 you just have to click meta editor and it will just open up Okay, this is in C++, okay, C++. So you can develop your own customized indicators here. So AI is also just mas machine learning language, okay, machine learning algorithm. Okay, it could be unsupervised or supervised, uh, which can be linked to here. But let's start with, before AI, let's start with interesting new technical system first. And all, then, all of this can be developed in a very cost-effective way for end users, for retail traders who are trading FKI and FCPO in MetaTrader, okay? You can just download it for free from online and then you can just uh, try it out, Meta Editor. Okay, then the next question you're going to ask me, of course, is um, uh, this is C++, I don't understand programming. Uh, how do I go about doing that, okay? So let me share with you, okay? There are a lot, a lot of programmers in the market and you can get their service for a relatively cheap fee. So most important, what is valuable is your original idea, okay? It's not really, the programming part. There are other people who can help you to program. There are companies out there. So don't worry about the programming part, but rather the original idea of the strategy is really the most valuable. So if you have an interesting idea and you want to test it out, there are always people out there that you can engage to code it into MetaTrader for you and then try out for you whether your system works or not, okay? Whether your idea works or not, okay? It's actually possible. It's actually possible, all right? 
And you can see indicators like uh, in MetaTrader can be customized, okay? And then you can backtest it and whether your system is going to work or not, okay? And then it's going to show you the result of the backtesting. And backtesting is not the last step, backtesting is the first step, okay? So if you have an idea and from idea, you engage a programmer, program it for you. And then after that, you try it out in MT4 and see whether with, with some backtesting data and backtest and see, well, well, your strategy seems to work without any curve fitting, yeah, you don't curve fit it. It seems to work in the past. And then you say, well, maybe it works in the future. Then you, you forward test it. So backtesting is the first step. Forward testing is the second step. Then you really test it out in live trading, okay? With either demo account or a very small amount of money, real money, okay? Right. And then your strategy report can be ex exported if you need to analyze it. Okay. So, so this first part, what I'm exploring your mind with is that how to come out of this box of fixed and locked in indicators in every broker, like all the indicators are locked. How do I create new indicators? So the first part of my sharing is really, there are tools out there and platforms out there where you can actually explore to develop new indicators for FCPO and FKLI. So MT4 is just one of them. You can also develop your systems in Quantopian. You can develop your system in TradeStation, NinjaTrader. There are many other uh, platforms that you can develop your systems in. So, so just be open-minded and uh, have the fun of seeking out uh, platforms that you can create new indicators. And then the whole fun is the process of seeking the truth, yeah? seeking the, the answers. That is the part of the fun. It's not just getting the answer I spoon feed you, right? Okay, so that's the first part. Okay, the, the second part, okay, the second part is once you have the system, let's say for example, okay, for example, you manage to get some data to your MT4 and you manage to create a customized indicator and then your own system in MT4 for trading FCPO and FKLI, okay? And then now, you want this to be able to run in your broker, okay? I'm just gonna put a few examples, all right? All right, uh, one of the broker that allows automation is uh, GF Apex, okay? They are using TT. If you wanna go through them, you need to use TT, trading technology. Another broker is RHB. If you wanna automate, you have to use Q you can use QST, okay, all right? And then another broker is LT, LT Futures. If you wanna automate them, you have to use CQG. All right, so these are the API uh, vendors that work with this broker. So I'm not broker specific. I'm just mentioning a few examples. Uh, all other brokers have their own uh, API vendors. You can check with your respective brokers, okay? Whether do they support automated trading, okay? So what I want to share here is actually the next step, okay? The next step is, uh, I, I just have one slide here just to tell you that if you're interested in um, High frequency trading, okay, and nano second trading execution in uh, Busa. Uh, Busa doesn't support, I think, if I'm not wrong, but my my knowledge could be a few years outdated. Nano second trade, yeah, they can support up to roughly, I think, around uh, two thousand trades per second, okay, for for stocks. But that data is outdated, so please check with Busa for more updated data. But I'm not talking about. HFT, but just one slide here to tell you that if you want to do nanosecond execution, you need spe specific chips in your CPU, okay, for, for HFT. But uh, today I'm not talking about HFT, I'm just talking about generally uh, automated trading, like maybe a few tricks a day or up to 10 tricks a day or not, not, more, not like a few thousand tricks a day. So that's what I'm focusing on today, okay, but rather the idea of automation. So uh, for TT, this is the UAT certification process for TT means that if you want, if you already created your own customized indicator and your customized system already, and you want to automate FCP or FKI trading in the local brokers, you have to go through a certification process, okay, that they have to certify that your system is like maybe bugs free, uh, virus free, there's no harm to them, to the broker, it's not going to threaten the broker's back end. So all these things are part of the UAT certification process, UAT, okay, user acceptance testing. Okay, certification process. This is for TT. This sheet is for TT. Uh, for Q QST and all this, yeah, the sheet is different, but roughly you need to go through this process. Okay. So once they spec the, they, they certify you that you can, then you are allowed to connect, okay, to their API vendor and you are allowed to automate your trading in your respective broker. So that's that you have to go through. Okay. So I'm going to uh, uh, share 
of course, we are talking about just futures, FCP or FKY, but just um, I'm sure a lot of you will be asking me, that, how about Malaysian stocks? So this is the answer to you. Uh, that's an example. If you want to automate a Malaysian stock trading in Busa, Malaysia, you can use one of the vendor called end-to-end. -end. Of course, I'm not promoting any vendor or any broker here. Uh, you Different brokers have this uh, ability to support your automated trading. Check with your respective brokers. This is just an example, okay? Right, that you can actually automate stock trading as well. But today we are not talking about stocks, but I'm sure a lot of you will be asking me, then how do you automate stock? So that's the answer. Okay, right. That's this is the more interesting part. Okay, this is the more interesting part, more, more, more innovative part. Um how do I have an intelligent indicator other than just technical ones like MACD, moving average, and stuff like that? Okay, how do I get uh quantitative indicators, like indicators that are more more accurate, more specific, something that is post 1990s theory, that's no longer those technical stuff, but more quantitative stuff. How do I do that? Okay. The key, the key, okay, the key is you have to connect your MT4, okay, if you're using MT4 for automation trading, you have to have one more step. So now it's not just connecting your MT4 to the broker, you at the back end, you have to connect your MT4 to an intelligent or smart data processor, okay? Either it's R or it's Python, okay? R or Python, that's where you can get uh, intelligent libraries where you can have a, a bunch of quantitative strategies you can find that you don't have to develop everything from scratch, okay? So last time, like for example, uh, in the early days, okay, I used to develop my uh, quantitative indicators in R, okay? Now everything is in Python, okay? Now, now less and less people use R, but R is still very much popular. Okay, and there's a tons and tons of libraries out there that you can utilize and you don't have to build it yourself in Python as well as in R. Okay, that you can actually, what these things do is that they give you very intelligent uh, indicators or so-called uh, prediction packages like help you to predict where FCPO is going to go next, where uh, FKI is going to do that. They have a bunch of tools that can help you in that. Okay, and if you want to do machine learning, you have to connect your MT4 to Python. The Python uh, has a set of machine learning tools, okay, which is the closest so far to AI of what I've already mentioned. Machine learning tools can help you or the models can help you to predict, uh, let's say this week, what will be the FCPO price or FKI price and where will be the direction? Is it going up? Is it going down? So if you want your system to be intelligent, okay, you cannot limit yourself to just MT4, not just MT4, but uh, Ninja Trader or, or Trade Station, those are very limited. You have to connect your uh, in indicator making interface to a data library, which is in Python or in R. Or that's what I'm trying to say. If you don't get it, uh, I, I, I can re explain again next uh, later. Okay. But that is actually the whole idea is that if you want your system to be intelligent, it has to be connected to a set of uh, data processing infrastructure. And then when they make the prediction, they can send it back to MT4 and then go to your broker for execution. But the intelligence is at the site of Python infrastructure, it's not at MT4, okay? That is the important part that you need to understand, okay? So we have evolved from telling you what our local broker has, their tools are limited. So to break out of this limitation, you can go to MT4, or some other platforms that you develop your tools in a very cost-effective way, some are free. Once you develop those tools and it's not intelligent enough, you have to connect to the data processor backend where you can get very intelligent predictive tools, uh, the libraries online in Python or in R. So that is so far what we ha I have shared so far, yeah? So you can see step-by-step, step, uh, trading FCPO and FKI become more and more interesting, okay? They become more and more interesting, right? Let's continue on, okay? Now let's talk about just connectivity. This part is very, very, uh, okay, uh, very fixed, very S SOP. So I'm just going to share with you, this is an example. If you want to connect to RHB for your FCPO or FKI trading, you can use uh, quick screen trading, which is QST as your API vendor. All right, so for detail, please connect your, uh, every broker has their own API vendor. So I'm not just talking about RHB, I'm just giving you an example, okay? So it can be applied to uh, any other brokers as well, okay? So this, I, I'm just giving you a very, very detailed example. If you want to connect to your, uh, your system, to the broker through this API vendor, that's one way you can do it, it's true, 
uh, through this uh, QST. So how do I do it? How do I do it? Okay. So first of all, I, I have spider inside my computer. What is spider? Spider is my is the place where is my Python. Spider is basically Python infrastructure. So I, I use Spider to program my machine learning algorithm. Okay, in Spider. Okay, Spider. I open up my Spider tree. Okay, and then there I, I open it up. Okay, and then I choose. There's a certain files that are given by this this vendor that that's how I can connect my uh, machine learning algorithm to their to the broker, okay? So some of it is, is given by them, okay? Some of the files are given by them. So I proceed to open up WinRHB, which is also provided by the vendor, okay? I wait for it to launch, all right? And uh, there's, there's a lot of steps here, okay? There's a lot of steps here. I'm not sure whether you can get these slides, but you have to ask the organizer, I'm not sure, okay? But I'll just share with you here. Uh, some of it are a little bit too uh, uh, detailed, okay? Right, uh, account information, and then you'll see your account, you click the, the trading there and then you'll be able to see the products that you're able to automate okay and then from there you go to web api js demo so that's where you can connect uh for rhb uh using qsd is using javascript to connect okay for mt4 to to rhb is using javascript to connect okay so i have to connect but my site is not using javascript my uh Spider side, I'm using Python. So I need to convert Python codes to be able to communicate with JavaScript. In between, there is a bridge that I need to build. I'll talk about the bridge later, okay? So I need to be able to connect to here, okay? So like order entry, pop out, configuration, and then I'll be able to click, okay, initial connection. So once you can see that the connection status is connected, means my system, okay, my, my machine learning system, algorithm system is now connected to RHB through the vendor called QST, okay? This is their vendor software for me to connect, okay? That's an example. WinRHB is their software to connect, okay? So host, the click run, and then it says uh, automated successfully, okay? So that, that's, it's a bit detailed, okay? But I just want to go through this with you, okay? So that's how I, my system now can connect to RHB as my, as my, uh, the, the vendor or the broker that I want to automate my trading of my FKLI and FCPO with, okay? Of course, we have we have done that. We have actually tested it out. We we have done is is actually successful. Okay, so short term trading strategy for FKLI. Okay, right. Uh, I'm just going to start with uh machine learning. Okay, because I'm not going to talk about any other strategy. Right, I'm just going to talk about machine learning. Right. So machine learning includes data acquisition, cleaning, training the model, evaluate model, and and repeat repeat until the model is effective. Okay. So I want to talk about the data. The machine is getting what type of data? Okay, so the machine is getting data from Bloomberg. Okay, under using MRN, machine readable news. Okay, means the machine can the AI can actually read news and fetch news at a very fast speed. Okay, it can fetch uh, this economic uh, in, uh, data release like CPI, PPI, uh, non-farm payroll, all this, and it also can fetch prices of other interrelated markets like, for example, bonds, currencies, uh, gold and anything that's related to what you want to trade, okay? Like, for example, FKLI, if it's an index, then you will need to look at uh, US indices, like S&P, all those, they might be have an impact on the Malaysian FKLI index. And of course, the Nikkei, the Hang Seng, as well as the other Asian index may also have an impact. So these are the input into your AI uh, system that you need. These are the data. So data is, if you want to trade FKLI, remember, the data is not FKLI price alone. You need to include other data like news and stuff like that. That's what makes a system intelligent is the data. It's not just the algorithm or the method of processing, but the data, the raw data is important. That's the difference between a very, very good AI system and a so-so AI system. Okay, so you can see that if my system can read MRN, machine readable news, is able to read at a very fast pace, okay, of about uh, 0 0.2 second, it can process about 50 new sites, okay, and 20,000 tweets, okay, so the system can process news very fast, okay, and if you were to ask me, um, does, uh, is it available, is it not just US data, but how about Malaysian stocks, Malaysian futures, do any service company provide this service of MRN for Malaysian data, the answer is yes, there are some data, there are some companies in Bangsa South, that provides the MRN formulation stocks and all this, okay? So please go and search it out. I'm not going to promote any company, yeah? Okay, and the way 
the, the AI is going to read the data is that it actually reads the data line by line. I mean, the, the news in the form of MRN line by line. So if let's say one of the news is the Deutsche Bank cut Citigroup group uh, by 40 cent to 0 0.75 is considered a downgrade by the AI. So you actually rate, rate this news really negatively. And then what you'll do is that you will have an aggregate rating of every single product that you're trading or you want to watch and it will make it into a chart or indicator for you okay for example like this okay so below here is the news sentiment okay of that product so if let's say this is nasdaq and you can see that there's a lot of news that the data fetch the ai fetch and then it, it, it just absorb and then it process it okay overall now the news is getting from positive to negative so below here you can see it goes from green color to red color so you can see nasdaq is going down as well Okay, and then here the middle part is the volatility of the tweets. Okay, the tweets volatility. Okay, so if it gets from less negative, more ne negative to less negative, as you can see, the red color is reducing. You can see Nasdaq going up. Okay, and this one is the news goes from negative to positive. Yeah, you can see the goal, this on goal is starting to go up as well. Okay, and uh, this one as well from negative to positive. And then there's a lot of volatility in people tweeting about. Uh, go. There's some good news about go, and then goes going up. And from the moment go is positive to the moment that goes go up, there is a period of about six hours. Okay, so it's not that this is too fast for you. No, you actually have a lot of time to prepare for this trade. Okay, if you want to manually trade this trade, it's possible. Okay, so MRN indicators are not just for the machine. Human can use indicator for manual trading as well. Okay, right. So. Just an example. So this one as well, okay, from sentiment turning positive for this product until the product actually go up the price, there's a there's a lag time that you can actually prepare the trade for. So MRN uh, is, is part of the raw input into a machine learning algorithm and you can utilize it well. If you know how to utilize it well, it is an advantage to you, okay? Yeah, I'm not gonna go into it, okay? But that is one input interesting input that give you alpha of your algorithm of your system is MRN, machine readable links. Okay. The second thing is about the way you process. This is talking about the infrastructure of your AI or infrastructure of a machine learning algorithm. There are so many models out there and uh, RNN, okay, CNN, uh, uh, ANN, okay, uh, also uh, there are a few others like SVM, support vector machine, okay, then uh, uh, K nearest neighbor, but I choose LSTM because of a certain advantage. I won't go into detail, but that is the machine learning model that I'm using. And that is the same model that AlphaGo is using, right? To, to beat the best uh, Go master in, in, uh, in Korea called Lisedo. If you know about AlphaGo, being able to best beat the best Naidan uh, Go master, chess master in, in, in Korea is using the same power infrastructure called LSTM, okay? Machine uh, sh uh, long short-term memory infrastructure, okay? Uh, again, I'm not going to go into detail. It's a bit of rocket science here. Most of you are not rocket scientists. So uh, just to let you know that, that the machine can see parents, okay? LSTM algorithm can see parents that human eyes cannot see. So if there is a certain of uh, parents in FCP or in FKLI, they are hidden to human eyes, but the pattern is there, the machine can pick it up, okay? The machine can pick it up, okay? Right, for example, pattern that seems very, very, Blur to us, but to the machine, these are very clear cut patterns, but we can't really see, but the machine can tell us there are some patterns there in FCPO. Okay, so uh, the details of how to optimize this, this system, like the optimizer activation epochs, uh, I won't go into the detail, okay, but please, if you are really interested, go ahead and Google research into, and Google has a very, very good uh, learning free website for all the people who are interested in LSTM model. The website is called uh, TensorFlow Blackground, uh, Playground, TensorFlow Playground, okay? TensorFlowPlayground.com. So you can just search, okay? Google TensorFlow Playground. You'll be able to find this where they teach you step-by-step step how machine learning works, okay? How AI works, okay? So I'm just gonna give you an example, okay? Example of how I train the system to predict FCPO, okay? Right, so this is a LSTM machine learning model and the input, okay, is, is MRN, the input is uh, some other things, like things which are related to what I want to use, okay? Right, then the output, okay, the, the model is this, train and retrain, okay? And then, the, uh, how, how do I evaluate whether the system is good or not, okay? I use three things, I use uh, this uh, mean absolute error, I use 
mean square error and also there's RMSE, okay? And also R squared. These are the type of things that I use to evaluate whether my model is good or no good. So it's very different from if you have a portfolio and it use a uh, sharp ratio, uh, comma ratio to evaluate, it's very different. Machine learning model, you use a very different type of matrix to evaluate whether this system is good or not good, okay? RMSC, R square, and MAE. These are the main three uh, matrix that I use to evaluate whether my machine learning system is good or not good, okay? Right, so I give you an example, okay, just an example. Uh, for example, I have data until here, until uh, 20, 218, uh, 31st May. Okay, so the, the last data I have is 2424, that's the FCPO price. Okay, so I put it into the system, the, the machine learning algorithm uh, fetch all the data, and then it process, okay, and then it pop out the, the, the output is that 2444 is the prediction, okay, means that the LSTF model predicts that there's going to be a small increase in price from 2424 to 2444 in the coming few days, okay, that's what it predicts. That's what it predicts. Okay, so is it going to be true? Is it is it reliable enough? Okay, let's just just let's just have a look. Okay, you can see that uh, two four four. Two days later, when the price opened, the price was two four four four. Okay, so that's exactly as how the MSTM predicted. The exact price is two days later. Okay, two days later. So so is this a, a one off luck or is it is it uh is it science? Okay, so what this system does is that. It gives all sorts of prediction for every week. And then from there, it find the most possible path that price can travel based on all the information, the raw data they give you. The system process it and came up with a pr price path prediction. Okay, so it's something like that. Every week it's going to draw a, a blue line telling you that, okay, it's going to come down or it's going to go up. So that's what LSTM system can do, give you a price path. Okay, and where is it going up or is it going down? Okay, all right. Uh, later on, probably if I have time, I'll just show you how LSTM system works. I'll just show you my, my spider and I run a, a demo in spider and show you that it works that way. Okay, so that is actually uh, using LSTM system, a form of machine learning system to predict FCPO and really can run live fully automated in one of my broker, which is RSB, through their vendor called QST. So I think I've slowly lead you from the fixed broker Okay, a uh, lock in indicator all the way to here that you, as you can see, uh, trading FCP or FKY can become more and more interesting for you. It become very, your, your mind may be open up that to new possibilities. Okay, right. Now let's go to um, things which can uh, impact on FKLI, okay, FKLI, because these are the things which are like um, related to macro, like uh, GDP, EPS. Uh, you can then 10 year U S and P. Okay. These are macro dimension factors. Okay. Then this part is really where the alpha is. If your system is able to process and quantify macro, that is where your, your system can really outperform others. Okay. So that is one part that I'm not going to go into deep because that is our proprietary technology is our macro engine for the, as all of you know, that uh, you're introduced myself as a robot, uh, one of the robots fund manager. So uh, our robot is very much macro engine based and that is our winning factor that no one else has that. And that is very much processing uh, fundamental data, but everything is algo and also uh, automated and also uh, quantified. That is our, so I'm not going to spend too much time into it. That's our proprietary, but I just show you that we have a macro engine that is our alpha. And also we have a way to manage the risk of FKLI automation. Okay, there are, there are different ways we manage risk. The system automatic and method risk, we just have to watch a show. The robot does everything. It's actually pretty interesting. So if you see the robot wins and wins and wins, it's very encouraging. If you see the robot lose and lose, it's, it's very, very worrying. So, so the, our emotion fluctuates with the robot as well. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna show with you, zoom in, okay? There you go. So the LSTM every day, it will tell me roughly what's the probability of going down, going sideways and going up. Okay. So for example, going down is red color. So there are 22% of going down today, 27.98% of going sideways and there are 50% of going up. So most likely today is going to go up. Okay. So that's what the LSTM system is telling me. But of course, it's just telling me visually, I don't have to do anything. It's just informing me, but it's going to do everything for me. Okay. I'm not going to do anything. So what it does is that you were just going to uh, place an order because why is predicting that it's going up 
okay, it's going to place an order of uh, this uh, indices. So here the example is NASDAQ, but I also from the NASDAQ, okay, the example is NASDAQ is based on NASDAQ leading L, uh, KL, FKLI. Okay, this strategy that I have, uh, this is called intermarket strategy, then it's going to place a trade in FKLI for me through the broker system. Everything is automated, yeah, automated. And then uh, what should be my exit strategy? How far can this trade go is the quantitative modeling of the volatility of FKLI. And this one, I will just share some of the secret I have with you, uh, is using Gush model. Gush model is how my system exit, okay, based on the projected volatility of FKLI. So this is the, and I'm using eGush, okay, of all sorts of Gush, okay. And then make it into visual, this is what you see, okay. The, the support and resistance are quite clear here for FCPO, FKLI. Okay, you can see here that this way it shorts, this way it long. The system has long and short points, okay, which is uh, accurate to a certain extent. This is for FCPO, okay, it's on H1 chart, okay, H1 chart. This is strategy, and I show you the result. The result is uh, um, uh, trading FKI using this way. The starting capital is um, uh, 20,000, 20, okay, the ending capital is 24,000, you can see here, right? Again, uh, Past records are no guarantee of future performance. The key is not to show off or to show you uh, that, that the system is really good and I'm not selling you anything, but the key is telling you that this is possible, right? Automation of machine learning algorithm is actually possible for FKLI trading and FCPO trading. So, so please do open up your mind and explore in this area and make your own trading interesting. So it's not really to show off anything, right? It's but to tell you, this technology is possible and it's not just like, uh, it's just new, okay, but it's proven and it's mature technology already. So please go ahead and explore, all right? That's, that's actually what I'm trying to say, okay? Right, so next is, uh, but last, okay, last part is how do I, how do you set up this LSTM or this machine learning? I didn't uh, spend much time explaining, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna spend a bit of time to explain to, Anyone can do it. It's not just that, oh, you need a lot of money, you need a lot of capital, only company can do it. No, any retail trader can do it and it's free, okay? I'm going to share with you this software. It's free. It's called Anaconda, okay? It's called Anaconda. You just have to download this software. It's free. And once you download this software, it comes with all the rest as well. Last time we had to install one by one. Now it's all in one, okay? So it'll become a lot easier. So you just have to install this software and then everything is given to you as well. TensorFlow is given to you. Keras is given to you. And through the... Uh, Anaconda prompt, you can pick install whatever library that you need and just install on its own. So, so installing the infrastructure to program machine learning has become a lot easier today as compared to last time. So any retail trader can do it. Why? First of all, it's free. Secondly, it's convenient. Just install one software, everything else is there. And third, there's so much resources in YouTube, in, uh, uh, you know, in online to teach you step by step how to go about programming a machine learning algorithm. There are so much free resources out there and free libraries out there. So today, compared to 10 years ago, it's a lot, a lot easier to, to have an innovative system to trade FCP at KLI using machine learning, okay? Okay, or a form of AI, okay? So if you are a non-programmer, uh, Jupyter Notebook is, uh, is in English form, it's a lot easier. If you're a programmer, you'll be like me, you'll be using Spider Tree to program your machine learning codes. Okay, right, then the next, the last secret that I wanna share with you is how do you link your MT4 to your broker's platform? Let's say your broker's platform is using JavaScript, okay? Your MT4 is using Python. How do you link over? The secret is zero MQ. That is the bridge to bridge over. From MT4, MQL4, that is the programming, okay, of MT4, bridge over to RHB or to uh, TT or to JF Apex, everything can be bridged over using zero MQ. Okay, that is the key. Okay, so I'm not going to go into detail. That is good enough tips for you. Okay, that's good enough tips for you. So I have another 10 minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share with you. Okay, I'm just going to share with you the actual, uh, the, the actual life that, okay, that I want to share with you, actual life of how I run my LSTM. Okay, I'm just going to share uh my 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 python okay all of you can see my python here all right so this is my my uh uh spider tree i think all of you can see so what i'm going to do is just i'm going to run uh the prediction for 
these are some of the old data, okay? Because why? I'm not going to predict anything, okay? I'm not going to tell you. I can, I'm not going to recommend any stock. I'm going to not going to recommend you or buy or sell. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you the process, okay? That this is this is the primitive way of doing things. Now everything is automated. When we first started, everything is just primitive, step by step, click and then it run, click and then it run. Okay, these are our old models. Okay, so it's just it's trying to process all the data it has, and then it's going to tell me, uh, should I, if I want to buy tomorrow, what are my chances? What are my odds? Okay, so it's just going to take some time to actually load. But what you can see here is the result. Okay, you can see here is the result. The prediction shows you that about zero point one four eight is down, means that there are fourteen point eight percent chance that tomorrow this thing is going to go down. They have fifty eight point one percent chance is going to go sideways, and there's twenty six point nine percent chance is going to go up. So what it's telling me is that the chances of going down is very little. It's either going to go sideways or it's going to go up. So if I want to long this product tomorrow, it could be FCPO, it could be FKY, it could be gold, it could be anything. Okay, I'm just showing you an example of the process. Then I have a lot more confident. Okay, it's, it's going on now because my my laptop is very slow, so it's good. It will it will it eats a lot of resources for LSTM model to run in a normal uh, computer. This is a normal laptop. It's not a very high-end laptop, okay? So, yeah. Uh, the laptop I'm using, some of you will be asking me, I'm, I have 16 gig RAM, okay? This is a five-year-old laptop, a 16 gig RAM, and this is an i7 laptop, okay? So that is a very slow speed that is going to, to run. LSTM, you need at least 16 gig RAM. Normally, you, it's better you have 64 gig RAM to run LSTM, that would be really fast. And use a server to run, use those uh, uh, razor blade server, you know, those things, I don't know, I'm not a server guy, but you need, the higher the spec, the faster it can run and you can process data, okay? So hardware is important as much as software, if you're really serious, but for people who are just starting out, wanting to explore this area, just don't have to spend any money, just go online and learn more. And with a laptop, you can also do it. So you can see from here, that uh, the prediction is this. So it's telling me that if I want to long, I have very little chance of uh, losing money. Okay, I have less chance, I'm gonna say little chance, about, only about 14.8% chance I'm going to lose because it's gonna go down. But if it's sideways, I will still break even, right? And then if it goes up, I have a, but it's not very good odds as well. So probably I'll just do a, because you say that most likely 58.1% chance is going to go sideways. So most likely the system will switch to a range bound trading model. It's not going to do, go a breakout model. Okay. The system can auto switch between models, breakout or mean reversion. Okay. So that is what the system is going to do. So that's an example of uh, LSTM model program in Python using Anaconda infrastructure. Okay. So I think these are some of the tips. Uh, a lot of things that I don't want to specify because again, it's proprietary. I cannot spend, I cannot uh, share too much, but also I want you to have the fun of exploring, okay, and enjoy, okay, learning the process. So that's, that's, an, that's an example, okay? So next thing I'm going to share with you is this MT4. Some of you have never seen MT4 before, okay? So I'm just going to share MT4 with you. What the hell is MT4? Okay, so uh, this is MT4, there you go. And then uh, you can program using, um, there's a, there's a thing here called a meta trade meta editor. And you click this, you'll be able to uh, basically load a, a, a program that can code your new indicator. And this is an indicator that we code. Okay, our arch model, gush model. These are volatility based uh, quantitative models that can show you a volatility explosion better or more accurate than Bollinger Bands. Okay, so I, I just compare Bollinger Band with arch and gush. Uh, is actually more accurate than Bollinger Band. Okay, so just an example. Okay, some of the quantitative models that we develop ourselves. But what I want to show you is this one. Is the you just click here, and then you'll be able to see this. Okay, uh, I'm not sure whether you can see that. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is the meta editor, right? Share. Okay, you can see meta editor. So this is where you can start your own indicator. That's where everything becomes fun. Then you are not locked down by a broker. Okay, like that you all can only can use Bollinger Band, only can use Stochastic, only can use MACD, only can use uh, MoveH. No, then, then you can program your indicator here. Then if you think about a lack of data, then you can always import data into MT4. That is possible as well. Okay, all right. So, yeah, so that's what I want to share. Okay, until now, I have uh, four more minutes, okay, to finish until 930. Okay, these are the software, okay, that I, can, I think I can share with you. First is Anaconda. Uh, Python, uh, uh, this spider tree, you have seen that, okay? Second is this 
um, this uh, so-called uh, meta editor coming from MT4. That's where you can program. You can program this uh, uh, algorithm, a new indicator, as well as the fully automated system. You can program it here. Okay. And then the last thing, okay, I still have four minutes. I want to share with you. The last thing is where do I develop those quantitative models? Like, for example, GDP, uh, non payroll. Uh, what things impact what thing, okay? What type of software do I use to develop macro-based uh, strategy, okay? So I'm just going to share with you that as the last thing that I'm going to share with you. And then after that, uh, that, that, that will be all, okay? I'm going to share with you uh, this thing called, uh, oh, it's not open yet. Okay, let me just open it first. It's called eView, okay? So I do a lot of my quantitative modeling in eView, okay? So I'm just going to share that with you, all right? Uh, eView, okay, share, okay, you all can see this is my eView, so I'll just show you some of the things I have, okay, uh, sorry, because I'm quite messy, there's a lot of things here, okay, uh, raw data, right, for example, this is my ETF portfolio anyway, I'm just going to share with you some of the things, okay, so I, I can develop easily my uh, models here, like, like, for example, who has impact on who, who is, who is affecting who, and also, like for example, Granger causality test, uh, whether the the indices have impact on my ETF and stuff like that. So SPX uh, on my um, ARKK, ARKG, okay, and then another one maybe um, AMOM. So does does S and P have impact of my these three ETF? So it's just going to show me, right? Like for example, S and P does have a significant impact on ARKK. You can see the probability is significant; it's less than zero point zero five. Okay, so I can build my quantitative model here. It does have impact on ARKG as well, but it does not impact on AMOM a lot. So this ETF is not impacted. So my macro uh, model is built in eView. Okay, and, and not many people use eView. Okay, but that I use eView to build. So again, again, another tips for you. Okay, so I think. Uh, that's 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 really about it that I show with you here and there. What are the tools I use? Okay, what are the tools I use? Okay, and then just now I was sharing with you uh, how to build a gush model. It's very simple. You can just build a gush model here. Like for example, I want to build a gush model for uh, uh, SPX. Okay, SPX. Okay, C, and then I'll just switch to arch model. Okay, this is a gush one one model for SPX. Okay, I will just uh, click. Okay, right, there you go. That's my gush model, and that is the formula. And I just paste this formula. Where do I paste it in? I paste the formula in MT4, okay? So I can create a proprietary volatility-based model that is better than Bollinger Band, just like that. Do it in eView, and then paste this formula inside MT4. And in MT4, that's where this comes from. So if you want to check, uh, is it from is it MT4? Is does it come from here? You can see that from the from the uh formula here. All right. And you can just check back to MT4. Let me just show you. That's a, that's the last thing I'm gonna show you is the MT4. Okay, right. The meta trader. Okay, this thing, right? And you can see from here that it's actually come from here. Right. The MT4. Uh, let me share with you some of the things I have. Uh, this is the arch model, right? Modified. And you can see that the Right. Okay. I don't know. Okay. We can see that that formula is exactly the same as the formula here is from the eView. So I paste it here, then it become my my proprietary indicator, the volatility based indicator, which is better than Bull in Japan. So that's that's how I do it. Okay. Right. So it's exactly nine thirty now. Okay. I'm going to stop. Okay. I'm going to pass it back to the host. So 